Hi, my name is Annie Grossman, and I'm a dog trainer. This podcast is brought to you by School for the Dogs, a Manhattan-based facility I own and operate along with some of the city's finest dog trainers. During this podcast, we'll be answering your questions, geeking out on animal behavior, discussing pet trends, and interviewing industry experts. Welcome to School for the Dogs podcast. services that I think tends to make a lot of people roll their eyes. And when I was working as a journalist and releases for these kinds of services would come across my desk, I could always kind of tell when my editor would be interested in a story about one of these things because it was kind of like there was always room to make fun of things people do for their dogs. And if you keep an eye out for this kind of story about these kinds of services, they almost always have the same lead. It's usually something like, last Friday afternoon, Bethany got her nails done and then had a ballet lesson and saw her Latin tutor. Bethany is a French bulldog. And there's always this kind of sense to it of like, oh, we got you, right? You thought we were going to say Bethany was a sophomore at Brearley. Um, Although I always find these leads sort of annoyingly dishonest because usually from the title of the article or the picture you can tell they're going to be talking about a dog so anyway i am sure i wrote some stories like this and i think i rolled my eyes just as i assumed my editor would and the reader would because i think there is this general underlying assumption somehow that people who spend money extravagantly on their pets are just ridiculous. And I'm saying all this because my point of view has really changed. Now, I know it's possible you might be listening to this and you might be thinking, well, of course her point of view has changed. She runs a place called School for the Dogs where people spend money needlessly on their dogs lots of the time. But I think it's actually more than that. You know, eight or nine years ago, when I first kind of discovered the world of dog training and realized that it was something that really spoke to me, I started to think how weird it is that there aren't sections in the newspaper devoted to animals in any kind of serious way. I started to see that dogs could be a hobby that was no better or worse than any other hobby, but that pet ownership really isn't recognized in that way in our society, right? Look at the sections in newspapers. There's a section on sports. There's a section on cooking. There's a section on homes, cars. But if there's any kind of pet section, It has generally been more about showing pictures of cute, adoptable animals rather than offering really interesting content on what it means to own a cat or a dog or any other kind of pet and with content that could actually appeal to someone's interest in animal behavior and that kind of thing. And I've also really come to think about what it means to spoil a pet. You hear the word spoil in relation to pets a lot of the time, or at least I do. (laughs) Um, But spoiling a pet seems to suggest that you're giving them more than they deserve. And I think it's a really strange way of looking at how we treat our pets to talk about how spoiled they are because I mean what does any hobby deserve 
Do people talk about giving a car more than it deserves? Do people talk about spending more money on the bathroom renovation than it deserved? The big difference in the hobby that we have when we are giving a lot of our time and effort and interest to our pets is that we're dealing with a living thing. But still, it seems to me that if you're trying to place any judgment on what you're devoting to this hobby financially or otherwise, it's kind of weird to peg it to what the cat or dog deserves or doesn't deserve. And it's also so different than stuff having to do with like horses, right? It's so interesting, I think, how if you're interested in horses and training and riding horses that people don't talk about spoiling horses in that way. If you buy an expensive saddle or board your horse at an expensive stable, it's not like you're doing something for the horse that the horse doesn't deserve, at least. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't deal in the world of horses so much, but that's generally the sense I get. Also, kind of just as a side note, I think it's also uh, interesting how horseback riding and training is considered uh, an ongoing hobby where dog training is, I think in our society, thought of more as something that you do and then you're done. But anyway, more of a conversation for another time. So anyway, my point of view about this kind of let's call it indulgent pet service or this this category of services for pets that is more than providing them with simply you know food and medical care and a place to sleep is that if you're not hurting your pet and you're doing something that makes you feel good then I'm totally all for it and I don't see why anybody wouldn't be for it especially Like I said, when I think about all the hobbies people do devote so much time and money for, that doesn't really benefit anyone other than themselves, right? Think about all the money people spend on cars and sports and clothing and furniture and all these things that, you know, I don't judge people for being excited about at all. Um but they're not really usually benefiting anyone other than the person spending the money. Whereas if you're spending your money on something that at the very least is a way that you and your dog can spend time together and you can make your dog's life a little bit better in some way, whatever that is, then I think it's a great thing. Now, of course, I talked about this a little bit in the episode um, I did a few weeks ago with Carly Strife of BarkBox. Would your dog be just as happy with a dirty sock as he would with some sort of designer chew toy? Yes, certainly, probably. But I don't think that means you're spoiling your dog by buying some kind of designer thing. I think it just means that you have that money to spend and it's making you feel good. And if it's also giving your dog something to enjoy, then yay, love it. So one thing that I think falls into this, let's call it the eye roll category, would be parties for dogs. And I have seen more and more people throwing different kinds of parties for their dogs dogs. And uh, in today's episode, I am speaking to a professional dog party planner. And let me just say that I have had a lot of fun at some parties that we have thrown for dogs at school for the dogs. And like I said, if you're not hurting your dog and you're doing something that's going to help strengthen your bond with your dog, that's going to help you share your love of your dog with others, that's going to allow you to spend time with your dog and for people you care about to spend time with your dog and their dogs. I think it's really all totally cool. 
our whiff shout out today definitely goes to a human. Her name is Sarah Williamson. She is the owner of two adorable golden doodles, two of my favorite clients, Meatball and Hammy. And for two years in a row now, Sarah has thrown these incredible birthday parties at School for the Dogs. Uh, last year, it was a unicorn-themed birthday party. This year, and it was just this past weekend, she threw a, uh, a whole fiesta-themed party for the dogs. And Sarah really goes all out. There are handmade gift bags and customized bandanas for each dog and uh, photo booths. And I could absolutely see some reporter coming and writing some gimlet-eyed account of all of these indulgent pet parents doing this uh, silly thing by treating their dog's birthday as if it were like a kid's birthday party. But again, from my vantage point now, I am just 100% excited about it and I feel glad that I've gotten to see this person show their creativity and love in uh, a really unique way, in a way that they've shared with the whole community of dogs and dog owners at school for the dogs. So big kudos to Sarah for being such a great dog mom and party thrower and for pouring so much of her, her love into her dogs because really in the end that's what it's about. If you're doing something that's going to help you feel the love that you feel for these animals who are in our lives for rather brief amounts of time, then, you know, yay. But let's hear from someone who actually plans parties for dogs for a living. <laughs> Hi, I'm Haley Mahalko. I'm the founder of Puppy Parties NYC. So we are a full service party planning company here in New York City for dogs and their owners. Um, so we specialize in birthday parties, adoption anniversaries. We also do uh, monthly public events. We actually have our upcoming um, World Pup Cup coming up um, next month. So yeah. Hold on, World Pup Cup. Let's step back for a yeah. moment. So, <laughs> so basically you're an event planner. Yeah. And do you have a dogs. background in, in event yeah. planning? So I went to school for hospitality and events. Where did you go to school? I'm from Ohio. And were you interested in, in dogs in school? Actually, no. It's kind of a crazy story. So um, I grew up kind of in the event planning world. My mom has done events for a long time. My cousin did events. Um, so that's kind of how I found my passion um, in event planning. But the crazy story is I actually didn't grow up with dogs. Um, I didn't grow up with any pets, not even like a fish, a rabbit, nothing. Um, so this all kind of happened. Um, I got my first dog, um, Bailey, actually when I was 25. So I didn't have an animal until I was were 25. You, were you pining for pets when you were a kid like so many kids or were you just kind of? I really, actually I really wanted a kitten. And um, we kind of just grew up in a household where we didn't have, you know, animals. So my mom did everything that she could without getting me a kitten, so she got me a huge book all about cats and, you know, stuffed animal cats, even ones that, like, purred and, like, wa kitten wallpaper and, like, everything, but, yeah, unfortunately, um, I just didn't grow up in a, a pet-friendly household, but, yeah. So you suffered, but that's you suffered a great, for a long time. great yeah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> like I said, all the way till I was 25, and then um, I got my dog, Bailey, and she's amazing and just really has, like, changed my life. She's Awesome. So were you already working in event planning when a light bulb went off and you said yes. there needs to be parties? Yes, I kind of pulled that crazy, um, what, what were I'm going to leave my job and, you know, go into doing this. Um, event planning, I worked at a hotel at the time, um, planning um, corporate parties in, and in New York, yeah. So I planned events back home, went to school for it, moved out here. Hotel? I want specific. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> the Bryant Park Hotel. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful so, hotel. Yeah. 
And so you were planning like weddings and... Not so much weddings, but more, it's like a fashion-based hotel. So at the time I was doing, um, we had two loft spaces that we had run out to like PR companies and fashion groups. Um, so I was handling all the events there. We also had a screening room. So we had a lot of like companies um, come in and it was really cool. I saw a lot of like actors and actresses. It's a very like hip, trendy hotel. Um, and then before that, I did more corporate events where I traveled. So I worked for like a conference producing company and did like conferences and trade shows, large scale. Some were like five, six, seven thousand people attended. So I traveled all over the U.S. and um, booked large, large scale events. So I mean, I think I think it's part of what's interesting to learn this about you because I think it's possible for someone to hear like, oh, she does pu puppy parties and think like, oh, she goes to Party City and gets some balloons for puppies. Yeah, <laughs> you know? oh, no. but you actually have a serious background in, in yeah. events, which I think is is, I mean, am, am I wrong? Is that a stereotype that I think people might have about people who plan parties in general, probably? Yeah, I mean, some people might not know, but like you said, you know. Like, the, this girl seriously plans yeah, a party. Yeah, like, serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know this, yeah. living in New York, you can't do anything, I think, half halfway. Yeah. So yeah, you have absolutely. to be good at what you're doing, and then if you're good at what you're doing, it seems like you are. You can yeah. really take take it and go in the direction you want to go yeah. in. Yeah, yep, exactly. And so I, how, did, how did it end up in the dog direction? Was it through Bailey then? Yeah, so um, it's actually kind of a funny story. Um, so, like I said, I was working at the hotel at the time, and I kind of, like, started the business, um, but it wasn't anything, you know, like, crazy. Just had, like, a couple parties, like, here and there. Um, and for, for dogs? For dogs. At the hotel? Not at the hotel. It wasn't a dog-friendly hotel. Just partnering with different, like, doggy daycares and companies in the city. Um, but before all that, so I, um, I actually called my mom the one day and I was like, mom, I was like, would it be weird if I throw a birthday party for Bailey? She's like, no, not at all. She's like, you know, you love planning events. That's what you do for a living. She's like, any reason to celebrate? Like, why not? I'm like, you're Go totally mom. right. I was like, you're totally right. So, um, yeah. So, uh, shortly after I, um, had a birthday party for my dog Bailey at the time she was turning two. And, um, we invited just like close friends and like family and we just had it in our apartment and of course went all out. I had like a princess theme and I had like custom gift bags and I organized like games and activities and I made puppy chow for the humans. I don't know if you're, it might be a Midwest thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm from no, Ohio. I so I did like puppy chow and like What's these, puppy chow? So it's Chex Mix, but you, um, it's made with like chocolate and peanut butter and powdered sugar. It's amazing. It's addicting. So, but yeah, so I made like that for the humans and like I said, it was all like a princess theme, like pink decorations and glitter everywhere and Bailey had a tiara and a sash and um, yeah, so the party was really great and everyone loved it and then like time would go on like six months a year and you know, we'd see like our friends again and every time we were together, like that party somehow came up, like, you know, that party you had for Bailey was amazing and you know, after like hearing it so many times, I'm like, you know what, like, maybe this really can be something, like, I love planning events, I went to school for it, I have the background, and, you know, I don't think they're really just telling me this, because, you know, they're friends of mine, I think they legit had a good time, and so, um, after that, I was sitting on the beach with a few girlfriends, and I asked them, I'm like, hey guys, like, I had this idea, I was like, you need to tell me, though, like, being my good friends, you need to tell me if this is, like, crazy or not, and I told them, and they're like, no, like, that's amazing, you need to do it, and, so yeah, that's kind of how the whole thing came about. I mean, the great thing is we've had a lot of really great press and PR lately. We were recently inside, like, or recently in Business Insider. Um, so yeah, so a lot of it, honestly, is like organic. A lot of the leads that come through are either through like our website or we're very active on Instagram. So a lot of people reach out that way. So. Um, you know, a lot of it is really people reaching out to us, which is really great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a mix of both. I would say on average right now we're doing um, one party a week, but there was a week in April that we had three parties. So, you know, it all depends. But um, yeah, so it all depends. I mean, every week, no day, no week is the same. So um, like I said, a few weeks ago we had three parties in one week, but I'd say on average, like we're doing like one party a week, whether it be like a birthday party or we host monthly um, public events as well. Um, so that being said, we talked about the World Pup Cup. 
Um, so that's an event that we're doing. Um, it's going to be super cute. We did a puppy bowl um, a couple years ago, and it's going to be very similar to that. So what we're doing is as the dogs sign up, we're putting them on teams where they're going to quote unquote compete against each other. Um, and we're making this huge artificial grass um, soccer field. And we have someone who's making um, the dog goals as well. Um, downtown um, Dog Pets, they're creating these awesome like 3D goals that are going to be on each side. And we have um, a referee and then actually... Um, Richie Redding um, and um, Katie uh, Haller with oh, Bark yeah, Fox. Yeah. They're awesome. going to be the comedians that are commentating it. Um, and so where, where is this it's going to be at Deep Head Hotel in Chelsea. Um, so yeah, it's going to be super cute. We're going to have like a photographer and like a raffle and some other companies. We're still kind of planning out like full logistics and everything. But yeah, it's going to be super cute. And they're each going to be like on teams and they're going to have a bandana. Um, and then we're going to have like soccer balls on the field that, you know, um, so yeah, when we did it for the puppy bowl, it was super cute. And like the dogs actually, you know, would pick up since their toys would pick up the football and like run. So we were able like run into the end zone. So we were able to keep track of like the score and we had like an MVP most valuable pup afterwards and it was super cute. So we're really excited. So, um, for all of our public events, like the world pup cup, we donate a portion of the proceeds to charities. Um, a lot of them being local charities and this one we're donating to, um, Brooklyn Badass Animal rescue so so when someone calls you up mm -hmm. do they contact you because it's their dog's birthday and they want to do something or, and or do they have a, a more specific idea or so, a less specific idea? yeah so everyone's kind of different some people come and they know kind of exactly what they want to do and some people don't so a lot of it um a lot of requests that we get are for first birthdays um but yeah, a lot of people just reaching out. Um, like I said, first birthdays tend to be very popular, and I think the reason is because a lot of people that own dogs, you know, this is like their first child. They don't have children yet, so you know they want to like spoil them, and of course they deserve to be spoiled. Um, so that's why they want to throw them like a big bash for their first birthday. So a lot of um, of our businesses' first birthdays, as well as parties for senior dogs. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a party coming up for a dog who's turning ten. Um, and her, so nice. <laughs> yeah, and her name is Boo Boo and it's the cutest thing. We're doing a Star Wars theme. Um, so the dog has like been through a lot. It's survived like brain surgery and like a lot of things. So her mom wants to do a Star Wars theme because she's like her warrior, but like a princess warrior. Party out in the Hamptons. It was more of a public event, but the tickets were a hundred dollars each. And it included, it was a pool party for the dogs, and it included... Um, was this last year? La the year before. We're doing it again this summer, too, because um, it was, like, a huge hit. Um, but it included um, uh, drinks, like, wine and champagne for the adults and appetizers, and legit, like, the dogs were, like, in the pool. We had, like, different vendors there and, like, a photo booth and a photographer. Um, and, I mean, what's... Not better than being out in the Hamptons on a nice summer day. Um, and then, yeah, so that was, like, really great. But, yeah, we have um, – we've done, like, parties for dogs, like I said, on rooftops and movie theaters. And, you know, like, it all depends on, like, what the client's budget is. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, like, our standard packages, but it seems like a lot of times those standard packages end up being customized packages. So, um, so yeah, kind of how we handle it is we're a one-stop shop and a full-service party planning company. So we do everything from working with the customer to find them the location, um, being there the day of, setting up, decorating, you know, running the show, singing happy birthday. We organize games and activities. And then depending on the packages, um, you know, we have different ones that include, like, the cake and the decoration and goodie bags. We've even done um, fresh flowers and centerpieces for, you know, more of the elaborate um, parties. So... Yeah, so it, So what what would it cost to have like a, a, a the 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 prime of the prime puppy party? I mean, we've done some um that were like upwards of like $10,000. Mm -hmm. Um so, you know, it just all depends. And where are people learning about you? And you said Instagram a lot. Yeah, so we're very active on Instagram. Um so a lot of people reach out that way and then um we're starting to get a lot of referrals from um you know, people that have gone to parties or their friends have had parties, which is really great. And then just a lot through um, just, like, our website mm -hmm. and everything. So. Are there any particular challenges as far as entertaining and creating a safe space for dogs that you've come across? Um, that's 
that's a good question. No, we honestly haven't really run into all the places that we work with are dog friendly. So whether it be like a daycare that, you know, has dogs in every day. So their space is, you know, well equipped to have dogs. But no, we've never really run into no. any issues. Like Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about games, what kind of games do you offer? So we do different things. Um, one of our most popular is musical chairs. But the kicker of it is the dog needs to sit too. So we like play songs and everyone kind of goes around in a circle. And the thing is, like I said, not only does the human have to sit, but the dog has to sit too. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always fun. And um, we have like a bunch of different props and costumes that we do for photo booths. Um, and just like different racing games and like the best trick and stuff like that. So a lot of different fun stuff. Do you have a maximum, uh, do you put a maximum on how many dogs you can have in a given space? No, it all depends on the space. So we've done some like very small, simple parties for just a couple dogs. And then I think the most that we've done um, was around like 45 or 50 dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did a big launch event actually in February. Um, and that was our biggest event at, for dog related event and that was um 300 people and about 150 200 dogs wow yeah all on leash or off leash or? it was um some were on some were off but the space it, it was okay for them to be off leash i mean i'm i i get stressed out about off leash interactions with dogs i think in general especially like dogs in new places but yeah granted that's partially because as a dog trainer i tend to see dogs who have problems yeah um but i also I've also been in the position where we've hosted parties, you know, mm -hmm. or really more meetups, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the particular situation I'm thinking of was at a meetup, which, unlike most of the stuff we do, is open to whoever wants to come. Usually, people who come for other things that we have at School for the Dogs, I think, are, like, you know, tuned into understanding that, like, if the situation's not right for the dog, we'll let them know, da 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 Yeah. But sometimes, like, with the meetups, we have people who just who have just come. coming in off the yeah. street. Yeah. And there was... One time in particular where there was, um, actually it was French Bulldogs, uh, two French Bulldogs that just, it was not appropriate and the owner wasn't taking initiative to leave yeah. and I eventually just had to like ask him to leave and I felt awful because it was like, it was like a, asking someone to, it felt like asking someone to leave a party. Yeah. But you've never had to be in that position? Um, I mean a couple times, but if they were like off leash, we just, you know, politely tell the owner, like, hey, you know, I think your dog just needs to relax a little. Like, mm -hmm. if you could just put them on the leash and maybe, you know, pick them up for a while. Um, but we never had where we had to, like, tell someone to leave. Like I said, knock on wood, we've been very fortunate. I think, too, is kind of how we advertise our events. It's kind of a lot of these dogs are Instagram dogs, and they're kind of socialites, and they've been to, you know, they're used to that environment. They've been to all these events, you know, Throughout the dog, city. Dog socialite. How would you define yeah, a dog socialite? I, a New York City dog Yeah, socialite. just like a dog that literally, you know, you see on Instagram the dogs that are literally at like a new event every day, you yeah. know, whether it be our event or another company in the city that's hosting an event. So I think they're just used to that like environment. Um, so one of our favorite parties that we did was a um, star studded event for um, a dog named Prince and it was at a movie theater. Um, the Alamo Draft House, which is dog friendly for um, therapy dogs, which he's a therapy dog and a lot of his friends are as well. <laughs> so we legit rented out the movie theater and we had popcorn for the dogs, um, which is just like these little like popcorn dog treats. And um, But just seeing it all come together and just seeing, you know, the dogs running around having a good time and the humans laughing and I don't know, to me, like I just got goosebumps. Like to me, that's like all worth it. Um, just seeing, you know, at the end of the day, everyone, like, being happy and having a great time. It's like, we know we, you know, had a successful event, so. uh, We hosted a Frenchie meetup, um, and we did everything, like, based on France. So we had, like, a huge French flag, and we had, um, we made these custom dog-friendly French martinis. Um, for the dogs and we had like French big like treats and stuff like that. We had a costume contest and the dogs, some of the dogs like legit came in their um, like French, what's the little hat? I was beret. Forget. Yes, the beret. They had like the little beret and the little striped like shirt and then a couple of them were matching their owners. Their owners had like a striped red or blue shirt and they were like matching. It was like the cutest thing ever. Um, and just like Frenchie overload. The youngest Frenchie was like three or four months old and a lot of puppies and it was just, I love all the squishy face dogs. I have an English bulldog, so they, 
they so have what do you party. what do you think it is that makes people want to throw parties for their dogs? How would you explain it to someone who was skeptical? Yeah. Um, like I said before, it's you know your dog is part of the family, so you know why why not throw them a celebration? You know, it's like they deserve to be spoiled and they deserve to have you know that day and. Um, yeah, so I think it's, like, a really great thing, and, you know, like I said before, it's not only, like, the dogs are running around, letting loose, having fun, but it's great for the owners, too, you know, a lot of times they, they bring or will have, like, human food and drinks, and, you know, they're talking and mingling, and the dogs are playing, and it's just, you know, all over, like, a really great experience. Best friend. Canine of mine, friend for all time. So glad you're my Fun dog fact friend. of the day, there really are people who throw bark mitzvahs for their dogs, among them Jason Biggs and his wife, who four years ago threw one for their dog, Teats, at a Los Angeles temple. They outfitted him in a yarmulke and uh, had him eat challah at the temple, the whole bit. I don't think he had to read a Haftora. I will post some photos in the show notes. Thanks so much for listening. You can support School for the Dogs podcast by telling your friends about it, leaving a review, or shopping in our online store. You can learn more about us and sign up to get lots of free training resources when you visit us online at schoolforthedogs.com.